Which Pokemon gets knocked out? <sighs> Hold on, Envy. Was that a whiskey? Oh! oh! Dude, I'm goaded with the sauce. I think they might have gotten all of them. Let's just wager all of them, dude. God damn it, what Walt! I, God what damn I, it! <laughs> you want to flip a coin? Yeah, let's flip a coin. It's looking like a knockout. Tonight's teams, Wolf and Cybertron versus Moxie Boosted and Lord MV. I am your host, Turn Down for Walt. Welcome to Beast Coast Pokemon and welcome to Knockout, a simple show that simply asks one simple question. Will it knock out? I'm going to show you guys a bunch of clips from various VGC events and I want you to dig into your vast game knowledge, your infinite memory banks, and your internal damage calculators to determine the outcome of said clip. Easy enough? Easy enough. All right, so let's get into it. We got... Returning world champion from episode one, Wolf, with uh, Aaron. How are you guys feeling today? I'm good. I'm ready. I feel like I feel like this is the dream team. There's no way we lose. I'm not the returning world champion from episode one. I'm just returning from episode one. I was one. about so to say, Aaron, <laughs> you've you've had some ups and downs <laughs> over the past no, couple episodes. So, I, how are you feeling specifically? This, this game gives me so much stress, but I've got Wolf on my side now, so I'm feeling good. Hold on, Envy. Was that a whiskey? No, apple juice. Okay, I was going to say, we're oh. done. We're done. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Dude, I've, I've played after a drink before. Everything feels like it should kill. I need to de-level myself. I'm, my brain's at level 100. Calcs, we're in level 50, so I got to take a step back and realize that everything does more damage. <laughs> Again, being there to remind Zerkatry it has to be careful with its Thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. It is also there in this instance, though, to potentially brick break the Aurora Veil. And I think the decision lays with Sam on this one, the key decision in this turn, at least, on what is happening in that slot where Marowak is. Is Marowak going to stay there and protect? Mm -hmm. Is it going to potentially switch out? And if so, is he going to be able to use the Garchomp to deal with that slot? We do see something like the Ninetales likely going to be setting up. It's going to be very, very limited in that. But a smart switch on that Marowak slot could open open a number of doors when it comes to Ryota's play. Yeah, it's going to come down to these early turns. Who can get the momentum here? We Question one. Does Whimsicott knock out anybody? So this Whimsicott is Z nature power. Yeah. Was it this game where it was like Tapu Fini switches in and then uh, the Mandibus Mandibus switches in? in? Yeah. From my knowledge, Whimsicott it is a Pokemon that clicks Tailwind, but I have also seen it run choice specs. I know this team. This is a very famous team. 2017, Ryota Atsubo won with a Normalium Z Nature Power Whimsicott. And that would turn Ooh. it into a priority move. Priority move because of Prankster. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure on this turn, it gets turned into Moonblast, which allows it to attack before Ruravel can go up. So I'm pretty sure it takes the KO on Garchomp this turn. <sighs> it does seem like it does seem like like Sam wouldn't just let Garchomp go down here, right? Yeah. You know what? I, I think my answer is no. You think, okay, I'll go with you. No, we're saying no. But we got does not pick up a knockout. This is in, in the game's 1-1, one, one, and I'm pretty sure game one of this set is when the Garchomp picked up plus to KO on the opposing Marowak with Ground DMZ. So I'm pretty sure this is the game where we see the one shot with the normal DMZ, but I could just be making that up. It could just be me. He's good at Jeopardy. He's good at Jeopardy. I'll say, yeah. Nature power makes a lot of sense. Nature I'm, power. I'm going yeah. with it. I feel it. Yeah, I did switch. Okay. Envy, we might have messed up. Wait, it's a Mandibuzz. Super effective anyways, right? Nature power. So far, so good. So far, so good? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not Misty Terrain. Or it's not Misty Seed, so we should be good. Oh, wait. I forgot. Huh? <laughs> Prankster doesn't affect dark types. I forgot. Oh. Interesting. I need to like rewatch this game because I forgot how he won after this. That's a crazy good yeah, turn one for it's, Sam. It's pretty ridiculous he wins after this. The uh, the Whimsicott player won this set? You're yeah, the Whimsicott player wins this set after one of the worst turns in the world's final, arguably ever. You blow your Z move and they get Aurora Veil up. You know, get that boost right now and then kind of take advantage of it by setting up your own trick room. But unfortunately, that's not the case in this situation. You can see Aaron there reacting to the trick room going up. He, I don't think he really expected the Bronzong to stay in. Um, and yeah, a little bit of a bad position for the Xerneas, which ha now has used its power herb up. So it won't be able to Geomancy later on in the game unless it wants to take a charging turn. It can protect this turn, though, the uh, the Xerneas, I mean. And Cresselia can go for another turn to reverse that trick room. But, you know, you kind of don't want to see those plays. You know, you have to spend a turn to set up trick room. Then you have to spend another turn to take it away. Yeah. 
Yeah. Of course, you know, Marcus could be able to see right through that too and go for some double trick rooms. Does Xerneas or Kyogre get knocked out? Xerneas or Kyogre get knocked Envy, out? Envy, <clears throat> um, I don't remember this set, but I'm pretty sure Marcus took top four, so just keep that in mind that we're in a top eight set. Oh, which year was this, by the way? This seems like 2016. This is 2016, yeah. This is oh. the same team that Wolfie ran. They ran it together. So I remember this this board state. Aaron just went for Geomancy and Trick Room in the same turn. So Trick Room is currently active. Wait, he set up Trick Room? And he geomancy in the same turn. He set up Trick Room and he set up Geomancy in the same turn. So he puts himself in kind of a weird position. Interesting. I can't remember if Marcus goes for Origin Pulse Trick Room, calling the double Trick Room, or if he just goes after Xerneas here. But what if Kyogre does? Like, because I guess you could switch Cresseliad into Groudon and then KO the Kyogre while living the Jarabon. Like yeah, that's true. Although coming. gyrable ice beam, you'd still be opening yourself up to it, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure neither go down this turn. That's that's my prediction. I think I, it's I think it's protect origin pulse trick room trick room. You could also skill swap. It could also like because bronze is skill swap, right? So you could read Cresselia into Groudon, Xerneas protect skill swap, and then origin pulse. But either it, 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 in that scenario, neither Pokemon faint, right? Like it's it because the question is that's true. Unless Xerneas, Xerneas attacks, which really Xerneas shouldn't be attacking here. It should be protecting, right? So yeah, I'm gonna say neither go down. I agree. Trick room is up. Kyogre's already chunked down, so Water Spout wouldn't do that much to plus two Xerneas. It still has either Scald or Origin Pulse as an option, and they can double into it with the Bronzong. Does Bronzong usually run Gyro Ball in VGC? Oh yeah, to- yeah. This format, it always ran Gyro Ball to try to, to, try to KO uh, Xerneas at plus okay. two speed. I vaguely remember a double up into the Xerneas, but I don't remember if it just barely lived or if it got KO'd. I think we need to lean towards KO because I'm pretty sure Marcus ended up winning the set. I don't believe Thunderbolt Crest was a thing, so I don't see how Kyogre gets... I don't see how Kyogre gets knocked out this turn without Bronzong and Kyogre getting to attack prior. Yeah, Kyogre seems low, but I don't think it gets knocked out here. Yeah, I, I think that the double up ends up happening and Xerneas goes down. I feel bad because I'm totally dragging Envy down if I get this. <laughs> no, you don't, don't worry. I, I have faith in you. I have faith in you. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, uh, uh, oh, oh, no! Wait, but that oh, means no! that means Kyogre faints. Urgent impulse. No! <laughs> <laughs> I knew something was gonna happen. I knew yeah, something was gonna was happen. Like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> completely when you do the math wrong but yeah get the answer right they both okay so that's an option oh okay <laughs> so oh, okay an option. the reason why paul was able to do this was because he eliminated that gengar on the second turn of this game so it feels like paul really came here with a concise game plan. which pokemon does snorlax knock out oh i got nothing um, <laughs> man i commentated this this feels like walt giving us a trick question doesn't it all had like belly drum snorlax i think at this point if the landorus has chipped down that low oh no it might have been Curselax. i think he might have been Curselax actually okay Curselax. because you know there's a potential option for it to self-destruct here and knock out both because it's not it's... self-destruct <laughs> that's, okay. that's, that wasn't a thing <laughs> Wait, the answer is which one? So it has to be one, something, right? Yeah. It's, it can't be nothing. I cannot give you a firm answer on that. But God it could be damn not it, what Walt! I, God what damn I, it! <laughs> I'm, all right, I'm thinking Latias. I'm pretty sure you fake out. What does your gut say? What does your Moxie say? What does my Moxie say? Moxie's always been wrong. Uh, Latias, yeah. Let's do it. I think that Amelia was like intimidate cycling Paul down. I'm pretty sure, right? Like, wasn't he using like Landorus and Incineroar to keep trying? He like, was, yeah. But even then, Snorlax was still doing a lot of damage. Yeah, it was even a plus two. It was doing a lot. Like, I think Latias switches to Incineroar and Landorus U turns or something. You know? Okay, I, I I feel like my gut says Latias, but I'll go with Incineroar. I think you're right. Incineroar, let's do it. Okay, fake. Oh, okay, it's gonna be a freeze. Oh, oh god, it's too. <laughs> Wait, you turn, you turn. You turn, you turn, you turn. <laughs> Damn it, Wolf. <laughs> oh, you were so right. I'm sorry. I'm off my game today. It's okay. It would have been funny if it were Incineroar. We oh, nice. We, we did it. Point. We there got the is. point. I was, I was playing assuming fake out was an option. It was not. <laughs> you know, you can really target potentially both, so... The Gengar here, of course, if the Landorus gets knocked out, if the Gengar still remains in, then it's actually going to faint to its own Perish Song. So you'd imagine maybe Gengar wants to switch out, but if it does, the Snorlax can call that and just target that slot with the frustration. And so many switch shenanigans are possible with both the option of switching out Gengar, U-turning Landorus to bring the Gengar back in. It's kind of like a, a, a janky uh, ally switch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
And uh, the other question I got to ask is, you know, is Snorlax at plus two going to be able to knock out that? Does one? Gengar get knocked out? And for a bonus point, if you can tell me how this turn plays out, you'll get two. I think Gengar went substitute this turn and Incineroar Snarl to KO it. Oh, heck yeah. I like that. Let's say that. <laughs> There's no, no analysis for this one. Just go yeah, straight Yeah, let's in. do it. That's cool. Let's do it. What happens What happens on the rest of the board? Vanderus, you turn into Latios? That sounds right. Landorus, you turn into Gengar, substitute Landorus, you turn into Latios. Snarl and frustration into Landorus. Okay. Gengar is the only one that goes down. Was it a 2-0? Did he win 2-0 in finals? He won 2-0. Okay, okay, I like it. I think I remember. I think I remember this. The floor is yours. I think Emilio plays super aggressive, and even though Gengar's supposed to switch out this turn to preserve because it's the last turn of Parish Song, I'm pretty sure he attempts to go for a KO, but it gets like protected on, and he ends up getting knocked out by, by his own Parish. If that's I, this is another I vaguely remember this. It came to me in a dream sort of turn. That's interesting. Yeah, Mega Gengar is a menace. That thing has Shadow Tag. I remember this this meta game. But here's the thing: like, what what can Gengar even knock out or try to knock out? Wouldn't Oko Incineroar would it? It's got it's got Lando next to it. I mm -hmm. think Sludge Bomb into U-turn, depending on I think Paul was also safety goggles and sin. I think that would do it from this range. Parasong's active for everyone right now, I guess, right? Yeah, Gengar, if it if it attacks this turn, it drops regardless because Parish Song KOs it. So I think Gengar, if it stays in, it it, it dies. So I think that we just say it, it goes down. I think it goes down. I think it goes down. Because the last Pokemon's HP was really low, it didn't go down. And the last this Pokemon's HP is low, it does go down. <laughs> I think that Gengar just survives after sludge bombing into Insin. Insin survives as well, possibly the double up, and it dies to Parish Song. He seems quite educated on this turn. Let's lock it in. I'm not. This <laughs> okay. is. I'm not. I, this is. This is. It's all dreams and memories. Oh. Dude, I'm goaded with the sauce. Dude, I gotta say, you are goaded with the sauce. I would have said, Gengar switch, Landorus, U turn, high horsepower, or Landorus, kill the Gengar. That's what I would have guessed. Oh, look at Paul. He's pogging out. Oh, he snarled. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> look at that pop off. Dude, we're so back. We're so back. We're so, we're back. so back. We are so back. We got one point. Oh, there was one turn left of Parish Song. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, 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 because the sound moves going through Substitute. That's always fun to see. We've seen the Hyper Waste, we've seen the Flamethrower, uh, but if it's a special oriented one, it could be a Draco Meteor, maybe a Tailwind or a Double Edge, but... Do Justin or Len's Pokemon get knocked out? And if you can tell me who gets knocked out by who, I'll give you a bonus point. Envy, this is a certified Rock Slide turn. It looks like it. Oh, I remember T Tyranitar like survives here, I think. If you tell me this Tyranitar fainted, I would call you a liar. This Tyranitar will never faint in its life. I feel like it was something like T-Bolt Rock Slide and both T-Tar and Gyarados lived. And then it went Rock Slide, maybe Waterfall into Landorus. I like that. I like that. I mean, the other option is Men switching in, but if Men switches in and we think Tyranitar survives, then it's pretty unlikely for anything to faint, right? If you're Justin, why wouldn't you just T-Bolt EQ? Unless you're Scarf locked into Rock Slide, right? Unless you're Scarf. And Scarf, this is this is 2018, right? So it, Scarf is really popular then, as I recall? Very, yeah. The, the Lando should be... It, it can hypothetically be at minus one, but the Tyranitar can also hypothetically be at minus one. But I do see what looks like rock slide damage on the Lando. <sighs> Technically, Zapdos could just go for Thunderbolt and or and you could like Earthquake here. T-Bolt Earthquake's also safe. It does seem like Zapdos just came out this turn, right? Yeah, and it can it can threaten to KO on Gyarados, but also Gyarados could just swap in for like a Moongus. And if the Lando is at minus one, I think there's a shot Tyranitar lives from this range and then like Rock Slide might be able to crit Lando and get Ooh, a Ooh, crit, crit, crit. Yeah, I think it's a crit. They wouldn't I, it's gotta be a crit. clip if it wasn't a crit. Yeah, it has, It's gotta be a crit, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say Amoongus switches in for Gyarados. Earthquake comes out from Lando, and Rock Slide crits the Lando and just KOs outright. You could argue that maybe Gyarados faints here if it just it was a T bowl into that slot. Yeah, but I think you're right about Lentar barely hanging on, and Earthquake would probably do it unless it's intimidated a couple times. I like calling Rock Slide T bolt into Tyranitar, Waterfall, Rock Slide, KO the Landorus. I like that play. All right, I'm down. There might have been a flinch though. Me? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh no! I'm so good. Landor. <laughs> Landor. Dude, we're rocking it. We're rocking. We're schmoving. We're so back. We love Assault Vest in Sand. That was a cool turn. That was a very cool turn. Just shows like the power of EV spreads, being able to have the bulk to survive everything. Oh,
Garden, so you can still set up a Tailwind later on uh, once Kinkelder faints here. So I think Marco is actually in a tremendous position, and this is one of the reasons why Kinkelder has been such a high priority pick throughout the course of this metagame, specifically for its ability to deal with Tyranitar, because you pressure with Mach Punch even after Tailwind, for example, expires. So right now I think uh, Marco can definitely click the Hyper Voice button with Sylveon. He has a bunch of decisions to go with with Kinkelder to maybe swap out back into the Whimsicott, or maybe you just sacrifice it here so you get a free switch and back into the Whimsicott and get another Tailwind off and close the game off with Whimsicott and Sylveon. Does the Conkelder get knocked out? Okay, I, I remember Marco actually knocked out one of his... He, he did self-target himself in this finals. Oh, yeah. I, I did watch this then. Yeah, I do remember that. There's four more turns of Sandstorm and it's burned. I don't think Sylveon runs Wish. But Conkelder could just drain punch its health yeah, a that's, lot. Yeah, that's the other thing. It could drain punch the T-Tar and get all the health back. It's one... Wait, one sixteenth of for both, right? So 207 divided by 16, it, 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 it would be... Uh, like just under thirteen. Does it round down? It rounds down, right? Oh, but but Ed, but Ed doesn't know that, and maybe Marco doesn't know that in the moment. I don't know. It looks like it's gonna die, so it just has to survive, right? I believe in plot armor. I believe in plot armor. You want to flip a coin? <laughs> yeah, let's flip a coin. <laughs> let's just start guessing. Elgato means it dies. Yeah, let's. No, it survives. It survives if it's Elgato. No, no, no. What did it, what did it land on? What did it, you're gonna just, you're gonna decide now? <laughs> you need to get one wrong at some point. I'm tired of getting him wrong. It survives. Okay, cool. We're locking that in. He doesn't get to think about it. I think Conk survives. Wait, so doesn't it survive on one HP? Yeah, either way. Like, it doesn't matter how it survives. I think it's surviving. Either it's side drain punch or it's one HP. I'm down. I'm down to predict that it survives. Because, yeah. Wait, burn and sand damage rounds down, not up, right? Yeah, it all truncates. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like just under 13 if you divide 207 by 16. So it should be 12 from sand and 12 from burn. Sure. So 24. So either way, it's surviving. Okay, cool. We, we, say, Kong, we say Kong survives. If this is the self target turn, I'll be so. Just play it. Play the clip. Uh. Okay, yeah, nice. it has one HP. I swear, if this just barely gets KO'd. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was the side target. This was okay. Yeah, I knew it. Good, good. I knew it. The typical Garchomp is your Z-move Garchomp, and that just gets obliterated by a Blizzard. However, one way you can kind of walk your way around that is by protecting Garchomp. The question is, can Arcanine from Justin's and knock out that Celesteela with the Flare Blitz? It also uh, takes some Blizzard damage, so presumably I yeah. think yes. So, unless this Garchomp has a way to survive that Ice-type attack, like a Focus Sash, a Yachi Barrier, maybe an Assault Vest, Garchomp most likely will go down here and... Which Pokemon gets knocked out? MV, I'm having an existential crisis. You're gonna have to answer this one, because I just remembered that 2017 is about seven years ago. But I thought you have dreams. What happened to all those dreams you were having? Could it be Scarf Chomp or would we, it's zero zero and it doesn't sound like you know the item at this point. So it, I think it could be Scarf Chomp. It wasn't that common because like Z was so good on yeah, it. Yeah, Z ground was so good. Everything is at risk of getting KO'd this turn, right? Because it's literally like, everything. Yeah. Speed order would be nine tails. Assuming everything's max speed, like nine tails, Scarf Chomp, Arcanine, Celesteela, and then nine tails could Blizzard. You could Blizzard Flare Blitz, theoretically potentially pick up a double KO. But if it's Scarf Chomp or AV or Yachi or Sash, you'd survive and then get an EQ off. Remember back in 2017 when they gave you really cool info on screen during the match? Like, hey, did you know Arcanine's a fire type? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to call Wide Guard Earthquake. I feel like... Oh, there's an alternate option. There's an alternate option. Three Pokemon get KO'd and Garchomp's the only one that lives. Garchomp, Earthquake, KO's Ninetales, Arcanine just barely lives. Wide Guard blocks the, the Blizzard and then Arcanine Flare Blitzes into the Celesteela, KO'd ah, and Ah, recoil. Do you want to go for three? Let's go three. Let's go those three. Oh, I really have no idea, Aaron. If you have any any strong preferences. What if they went like, I was going to say Garchomp Protect, Celesteela Faint, so you get a free switch in? Yeah, that would be And then uh, you have something that's faster than Ninetales in the back, so then you can pressure Ninetales with the KO and then yeah. you move Arcanine. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I'm down for that. I think Celesteela is a reasonable answer. I mean, uh, my gut says Ninetales because I think it's like, yeah, let's just say Celesteela. I don't know. This one is it's like a total guessing game. Oh, uh -oh. no. Oh! oh survives. <laughs> survives Blizzard? <laughs> what the hell is the item on Garchomp? Dang it, only two. <laughs> I'm surprised the Garchomp lived that, but it makes sense because it's a little weaker on the spread. As is tradition, before I show you the clip, you can wager any amount you would like. I will, s let me, let's think. Wolf plays super aggressive. He would wager all these points. And he would lose all of them. No. I feel like we're going to win, right? We don't need to, we don't need to wager. You want to wager one? Try and make it eight out of eight points? Yeah, let's do it. 
Okay, we're waging one. I think they might have gotten all of them. Let's just wager all of them, dude. Into that night head, though Simonin are also knowing that, hey, even if he did that play again, um, there's a chance that I just take the attack once again, set up Aurora Veil, and he was in an okay position. Mm. So Alex, on the other hand, might now want to go for a Flare Blitz instead to, for, to secure that KO, or he could try to go after that guard shop that protected in the first game. Yeah, this is a 50-50 choice on who he For was. a final point, does the Nile go get knocked out by Garchomp. I'm gonna say no, and I know why. Oh, he knows! He had a dream! No, no, I don't know, but I know. <laughs> I don't know, but I know. I know I, I know the archetype. So even though we don't see what Pokemon is in the back, this is an archetype that was called Ban, and it was Bulu Arcanine Nihiligo. You would run Grassy Seed on Nihiligo uh, with a lot of bulk, and the Intimidate from Arcanine, along with the Grassy Seed and the Grassy Terrain, blocking damage from Earthquake, because at this point, I don't believe Garchomp got stomping. It reduces the damage, yeah. It reduces the damage enough where you're able to just straight up eat earthquakes. I like that. No, it makes sense too because... Because uh, they wouldn't show us the clip if it were that easy. Well, what the heck is Nile Eagle? If Helping Hand is coming out, it's what? Either Sludge Bomb into Ninetales for the KO or Hidden Power Ice into the Garchomp for the KO, right? What a goofy looking Pokemon. I haven't seen that jellyfish in so long. That, that doesn't even look real anymore. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. I feel like no, right? I feel like the phrasing makes me think that Hail is going to KO Nihiligo. Ooh. I agree. I like that. You want to say no, Nihiligo will not be knocked out by Garchomp? Yeah. For all the marbles. <laughs> oh. Oh, it didn't kill. No, it's over. <laughs> That's better. Pokesash! Let's go! Yo! Let's go! Focus sesh, focus sesh, focus sesh. Ooh! <laughs> How could this happen? Wow, oh, dude, to me? what? <laughs> We got almost everything right. We should have wagered more, man. We're so not back. It's so, it's so over. It's, it's so, so, it's so over. over. We are not back. We bet high. We bet high and we win. We win big. The power of gambling. The game is over, by the way. Moxie and MB, you win. I've been turned down for a while. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe for more Knockout. And remember, Power World is kind of like this game, but with guns. Good night. Bye. Peace.